I am Kelly Carter, and this is Another Act. <music> Bianca, welcome to the show. It is so nice to finally talk to you. You know, you're one of those actors that many of us of a certain age feel like we grew up with you because we did. So I want to start here. We're in the final season of Queen Sugar, and you really found your way into the hearts of viewers. What made you say yes to this show in the first place? Like, what was it about this project? Um, I never had a character like this before. Um, I'd always wanted to play a character like this. It was very different from the last couple things I'd done. Um, I wanted to work with Ava. I wanted to work with Oprah. And yeah, it's just, I think, you know, as, as an artist to, to not feel stagnant, you always want to have like a new challenge and play that may be the opposite of what you just did. Or there's maybe you're at a time in your life where there's certain things you need to work out, you know, and you work it out for your character. So I just, I love that she was just completely different than anything else I'd ever done. And I also wanted to work with these women. It was all those things. It was, yeah. the, it was the experience I wanted to have, the things I thought I was gonna learn, um, the ways in which I'd probably be challenged in a different way. I love how Darla starts out so completely unadorned and makeup free. My favorite scenes, it's like, oh, she's in bed, no, no makeup, no hair in a bun. You know, because then it's about the life inside and I've done a bunch of shows that were so about the look and mm. everything about the look that mm. I, I, I was excited to kind of get raw and and it be fully just about whatever's happening inside of her. Mm, that's interesting. Do you think that that's been a handicap for you as an actor before? I mean, obviously you're very beautiful and you're an ageless wonder. And you said that a lot of the characters have been about the look and you love that this one wasn't. So do you think that what you look like has been a deterrent for you in this industry before? Um, no, I think it just depends on, again, I think whatever the last thing is you did that was popular, that's how people see you. Mm -hmm. And so you just, it's like, you just have to, they just have to see you do something else. And when I was younger, I was not, I actually did, liked playing the hot girl when I was younger because I did, I did not feel that way in my life. Like I was bullied so badly. I struggled with um, emotional eating, you know? And so I, you know, I was such a nerd and such a loner that that getting to play these characters that were so confident and people thought were so beautiful and so sexy, that was, that was great for me because I could, you know, embody something else that maybe I wasn't necessarily feeling in my life. Mm. Um, so I don't think it's been a handicap. I think it's only a handicap if you kind of, you have to show them something else, right? And in my life, I never wear makeup and my hair's in a bun and in sweats. And maybe sometimes you gotta show them that. Um, but, um, so I think it's like the perception of you, but I do think you can change your casting. They may not be like, maybe like, I don't want to see Bianca for that. She doesn't, that's not that her, they're the type. But then if you talk to your agents too, and you're like, listen, I want to go out for things like this. And I really think that I can do it. And when I auditioned for this in the original breakdown, she was described as being beautiful and stylish. And so when I went in the room, these gorgeous women, you know, were in the room and I was like, no, I, 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 I want to play her stripped down. That's what would be fun for me. Mm -hmm. And so maybe they he called me in because, of, oh, Bianca, look, you know, but that's just like, you know, that's just, that's not necessarily like all of me. So I don't think it's been a handicap. I think it's, it, it can, it can affect people's perception of what, what they want to call you in for. Mm -hmm. But if you get an opportunity, like I've gotten with Darla to do, to show so many different things and so many different sides of myself, then suddenly it's like, oh, you know what I mean? I didn't, you know, I didn't see her. I didn't see that, but you got to show them. Yeah. And to that, like you said, you really show people something different with Darla. One thing about her story is that it really shed light on the fragility of addiction and the meaning of redemption. And quite frankly, it gave viewers a different view of this narrative in Black families. 
how did you prepare for the role of Darla? And, and what does it mean to you that your portrayal of this character has really opened up conversation for families? Well, I'm, I'm, I feel very proud that I um, have been the conduit for that. Um, how did I prepare for it? I've known many, many addicts in my life. And I have had my own things that, you know, that you struggle with, right? Um, and, you know, and I also, you know, talked to people and read documentaries and got in message boards and, you know what I mean? And all that stuff. And just also the concept of the thing of there's this, this thing that's just got such a hold on you you know and that that kind of moment to moment fight of trying to push through and and what's what i do also love about darnell's journey is it wasn't like okay she was just like this uh was a selfish person that just started to become an addict and not care about her kid you're right nobody wants to be an addict no one chooses to be an addict you don't know what happened to them you know what trauma you know and maybe or whatever right like or maybe it wasn't even based on trauma but you don't know people's full story so I love that she has not been one dimensional and that she's, you've been able to see all of the possible ingredients that went into her going down that pathway. And you never know what the why is. You can assume the why is this, the why is that. It could be a million little things, mm -hmm. who knows? It, um, but, um, but I love that like she really had to, you know, she, she had to pull herself up by herself, whereas Ralph Angel had his family, you know, in the beginning. Yeah. She, you know, her parents were not speaking to her. She went through the program by herself. She had to fight, fight tooth and nail to get back in that kid's life. You know, she got her job in the parking garage and she was so excited about that little job and her little trailer and just really, you know, she kept fighting and sometimes she slipped and sometimes she fell back, but she kept, Show, trying to show up for her child, show up for herself. I just, you know, I love her and I could, I could cry talking about her, but um, so the fact that um, she has opened up that dialogue, especially within black families where I think sometimes, especially if maybe you are on the other side of it, if you have a family member, right? And so you think, why are they, why do they keep doing this, you know? And it's hard for the people close to them um, it's really hard and it's, and it's really an impossible thing to understand fully if it hasn't happened to you, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's like this behavior, you're like, I don't know what to do. Do you not care? You know what I mean? Are you, you, you know, why can't you just stay on track? Why can't you just be disciplined? Why can't you just make the decision to stop? Because look how it's been it's ruining your life. You know, I love that they've shown a lot of different sides of it and that people it's opened up a broader i think more nuanced more sensitive more thoughtful conversation about addiction and how it impacts the children and not just the addict but the family um the significant others you know so i feel like um you know it, acting it, it's lovely and it's wonderful and and but there's something about it not just being for you but it having like an actual impact on other people and maybe is healing for other people or allows other people to have a greater understanding of themselves or of others um people that maybe are having similar struggles and and are feeling very alone that's like the great the great gift because sometimes you think oh god is it worth it you know because all these other things that come with being in the business that i could really take or leave yeah. But so when you get a part like that, that uh, moves people and uh, opens them up a little bit and facilitates these kinds of conversations, uh, that's like a great, great gift. I love that. Thank you for that answer. That was amazing, Bianca. You know, like I said earlier, you've just been a part of our lives for so long and your longevity has been amazing. What's the key for that for you? Yeah, I don't know. I think... You know, it's weird to me that the decision of an eight-year-old has like created the fate of my life. Um, I just, I, I got, I was just really fortunate. I, I wanted to do it and I enjoyed it. And I did not 
re not getting parts, the rejection part was peace was not a thing for me at all. Um, I, and I didn't have some master plan, by the way. Mm. I didn't have some master plan. I didn't have some like vision of how kind of, you know, of course there were parts that I would, I was like, oh, if I could ever do something like that, I would wish I could do that. I, if I could work with this director or have that kind of experience, but you get the parts that you get, you know, and you, I auditioned for, I mean, hundreds of thousands of things. That I, you know, so many things you have no idea. And then you get the parts you get and you can't control it. And um, I think I just never stopped. Now there have been times in my life, I'm like, yeah, I want to keep doing this. Maybe, you know, you know I quit, maybe I'll do something else. But uh, but then it's like that thing, you know, it pulls you back in like right when you're like, okay, I think I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good right now. I might want to explore some other things. Then this opportunity comes and you're like, oh, you know, so yeah, I don't, I wish I had a secret to it. Um, I just, I always just took it very seriously and it was something that brought me a lot of joy. Um, and it was a great outlet for me to uh, express myself, to feel like I was living a bigger life. Cause it's like, you know, you each set, it's like a different family. It's like a touring circus, right? And then you travel to this place and that place and you meet all these different people you would have never met before. Yeah. And all these things that you may have never experienced in your life before, before that you have a longing to, you get to act it out, you know? So I've, I've always respected it, you know? And I've, I've always tried to, my parents were very, very much sticklers about being responsible and, and being, you know, having that work ethic and being polite to people and being on time and, you know, and so for them, my grades were the number one priority. So mm -hmm. I was doing it for me. So it's like, if you want to do this, you have to be on top of all these other things. Mm -hmm. And so really I wasn't doing it for anybody else but myself. Yeah. And I just, I loved it. So I, I wish I could say there's some, some master, like I had some master plan to be in it. And, you know, I just hope, I think hopefully maybe, you know, some people they can um, get onto something that becomes, get some notoriety. And I think there's a saying that success reveals who you really are. And mm -hmm. sometimes that's, uh, it's, that can be hard for people. Um, and also I got lucky. I think that I, when I was younger in the business, there was no social media. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I literally, I just went, I went to school and I went to my auditions and I had no idea. The only way I knew how people felt about what I was doing was if I just happened to run into them in the street, yeah. but like there was no social media. So it was like, you know, it, it was sort of like you make your art and then you walk away and you don't know what the play by play is. And I'm sure there are parts that people probably hated when I did it. And luckily I didn't know. And then years later, I'm like, oh my God, she's my favorite character. I totally get it now. You know, so, you know, it's like, it, you don't, you don't want to be watching the thing and seeing how people are like responding as you're making your art, because you don't want that to influence it. You want it to be as authentic as you can. And it's hard, it's hard to not sometimes give into that because it's, can be a little bit of a drug of like, oh, people like when I do this or people, da, 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 you know, and yeah. seeing what everybody else is doing. Um, so yeah, I, I got lucky there, I think. Oh man. Well, thanks for all the great content over the years. You've been entertaining us for so long and making us see ourselves. So uh, we really appreciate that. Thank yeah. you, thank you. <laughs> right, continued success. Hey, okay, bye.